Today, I want to take a look at the Triax TurboTouch 360. This is a third-party console gamepad from 1993 that's somewhat infamous in retro gaming circles for reasons that will become apparent shortly. I have the Sega Genesis version here, which seems to be the most common variant, though there were also versions released for the NES and Super Nintendo. Comparing the TurboTouch 360 side-by-side -side with an OEM Genesis controller, there are more than a few notable differences. The first thing is the turbo button feature, which to be fair wasn't that uncommon among third-party controllers of the time. The real standout feature that you've no doubt already noticed is the D-pad. This controller doesn't have a D-pad in the conventional sense. As its name implies, this is a touchpad. No buttons here. It uses the same capacitive touch technology found in laptop trackpads and iPod click wheels. If you've ever played a mobile game that uses a virtual joystick, you already know why this design never caught on. Also consider that capacitive touch sensors were still fairly new in 1993. Imagine trying to play one of those aforementioned mobile games, but with the joystick mapped onto a 90s laptop trackpad instead of a modern multi-touch display, and you have a pretty good idea of what it's like to play games with the TurboTouch 360. In terms of build quality, the TurboTouch 360 feels cheaper than most of its contemporaries. It's comprised of a notably softer plastic than the OEM Genesis controller, and the body has a subtle give to it. It feels like I could do some serious damage to this thing with just my bare hands if I were to try hard enough. The buttons are slightly larger than those on the official controller, and feel very mushy to press, both because of the softer plastic, and because of the cheap rubber dome switches underneath. Aside from the inferior build quality, the shape of this gamepad just isn't very ergonomic. It's a bit too thick, and I can't quite figure out a comfortable way to hold it for extended play sessions. It can't hold a candle to the OEM Genesis controller, which has probably the best ergonomics of any pre-PlayStation gamepad. Now, as weird and gimmicky as this controller is, I'm actually more interested in how it was advertised, because the marketing for it was... questionable. Every ad Triax put out for this thing proudly proclaimed that playing with the TurboTouch 360 would result in some combination of longer play sessions, higher scores, or higher levels reached, when compared with an OEM controller on the same system. They even had a money-back guarantee if the controller didn't live up to their claims. They were confident in this thing. So what, you might be thinking? It's a Turbo controller. Of course it's going to outperform a regular gamepad in titles that could benefit from a Turbo function. And while you wouldn't be wrong to think that, a significant portion of Triax's bold marketing claims focus not on the Turbo function, but on that touchpad. To quote that magazine ad I showed a minute ago, Thanks to the revolutionary touch sensor, which allows you to control direction and response with just a touch of your finger, you'll be reaching higher levels with more challenges, more excitement, and longer play. There was also this. I have a touch sensor for movement in any direction. I have a rocker switch for up, down, left, right movement. I can easily move diagonally and in a circle. That's tough for me. I can move objects on the screen as fast as I can move my finger. I can't. I'm guaranteed for longer play and higher levels. I'm not. Triax sure seemed convinced that the touchpad in and of itself would offer a competitive advantage over a standard D-pad, and strongly imply that said advantage will have tangible benefits in any game requiring quick reaction time. Needless to say, I'm more than a bit skeptical of these claims, and that's why I designed an experiment to try to determine their validity. For this test, we'll be using two games, Columns and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I chose these two titles because they both require quick reactions with the D-pad in their later levels, but gain no benefit from the turbo buttons, so this way you know that we're only going to be testing the advantage the touchpad supposedly offers. I also enlisted the help of my girlfriend so that I would have a larger sample size and could get a few more data points. The way this test works is that we'll each play both games back to back four days in a row. Each game will be played twice once with an official Sega Genesis controller, and once with the TurboTouch 360, with the goal on each run being to get to the highest possible level with the highest possible score without using any continues. So once that game over screen appears, that's it. Game over. We write down the current level and score and move on. To help control for variables, the order we use the controllers in, the order we play the games, and which of us plays first will all be switched up day to day. We're also making sure to conduct these tests at around 4 p.m. each day, so hopefully there won't be too much variance in how tired or hungry we are. Now, prior to running this experiment, I had never actually tried to play a game with the TurboTouch 360 beyond just testing to see that it worked, despite having had it in my collection for years. 
Having now tried to play games with it properly, I can say that one thing Triax definitely didn't lie about is the sensitivity of the touchpad. It really does just take the lightest touch of a finger to trigger it, and there's a very small but noticeable difference in response time due to not having to press down a button all the way. Unfortunately, any gains that may come from that lower response time are more than offset by the other problems the touchpad introduces. Because the touchpad registers touch and not pressure, there's no good way to rest your thumb on the D-pad without triggering any inputs. That means the only way to slow down or stop moving is to take your thumb completely off the D-pad, which takes conscious effort, not to mention more time, and doesn't come naturally at all. There's this raised edge that encircles the touchpad, which you're supposed to rest your thumb on, but in all my time playing I just couldn't get used to it. It feels so counterintuitive having to rest my finger on the outside edge of the D-pad instead of on the center mound. The other problem is accuracy, or rather, a lack thereof. It's easy to misjudge where to place your finger on the touchpad while changing directions, especially if you're moving quickly, which leads to either hitting the wrong input or triggering two inputs at once frustratingly often. Now let's get into the results of that test, starting with Sonic 2, which went about as well as you might expect. While our play sessions did get longer and our scores higher with both controllers over the course of the four days, there was not a single instance of our TurboTouch scores beating those that we got with the OEM controller on the same day. The farthest either of us ever made it with the TurboTouch controller was the Eggman boss at the end of Metropolis Zone Act 3, with a score of 156,080, and that was on the final day of testing after I'd adjusted to the crap factor. For comparison, my best run with the OEM controller was on that same day, where I made it partway through Wing Fortress Zone with a score of 196,370. Totaling everything up, our combined average score with an OEM Sega Genesis controller was 91,258, while our average with the TurboTouch 360 was only 73,013. So far, these results are not looking good for the TurboTouch. Now let's move on to our test results for Columns, which actually ended up giving us the more interesting results of the two games we tested. My girlfriend's results were pretty much in line with what we found for Sonic 2. Across all four days, her average score with the TurboTouch was 5,656, compared to her OEM average of 8,040. When I played Columns, though, my scores with the TurboTouch 360 beat out those of the OEM controller on all but one day of testing, and often by a significant margin. My average Columns score with the OEM controller was 6,109 points, whereas my average with the TurboTouch was 12,634. The single highest score either of us got in columns was 23,447 points, which I got with the TurboTouch 360 on our second day of testing. My OEM controller score for that same day was only 6,358. That's a difference of over 17,000 points, which by itself is larger than any of our averages. So what's going on here? Why did the TurboTouch 360 allow me to dominate at columns, when every other trial we did seems to indicate that the touchpad is objectively worse than a conventional D-pad? Well, it turns out that if you play the right game in the right way, the TurboTouch 360's touchpad can indeed give you a huge advantage over a standard controller, and columns is possibly the single best game to play with a TurboTouch 360. If you've never played Columns, it's a puzzle game in the vein of Tetris, where the goal is to match up lines of colored gems. The D-pad is, naturally, used to move the gem blocks back and forth as they fall. The blocks snap to a grid, which eliminates most of the precision problems that normally come with using the TurboTouch, and that means you can get away with keeping your finger on the touchpad most of the time. I ended up sliding my thumb back and forth to position the blocks while playing with the TurboTouch, and it took some getting used to, but once I did, I actually found it to be quicker and more responsive than a standard D-pad. Moving the blocks around with the touchpad actually feels a lot like moving an ASCII mouse cursor around in DOS, just worse in every way. I was genuinely surprised to find how well the TurboTouch 360's touchpad can work in certain games, if you treat it more like a mouse instead of a conventional D-pad. Though this method might not work for everyone. Despite explaining my technique to my girlfriend, she never quite got the hang of it, and instead stuck with the tap and lift method, which resulted in her overall lower scores with the TurboTouch. Out of curiosity, I decided to try out a couple other games that I thought might benefit from this more mouse-like input method. Now, I didn't do any extensive testing with these, I just played them briefly to see how well they work with a touchpad. 
First I tried Devilish, which is a breakout style game, and that works decently well. I didn't have to take my finger off the touchpad, but the input felt like it was constantly fluctuating between unresponsive and oversensitive. It was definitely playable, but I don't think there's any reason not to just use a regular D-pad in this case. I also tried out Zero Wing, which worked okay, but the lack of multi-touch meant that I couldn't move the spaceship around like a mouse cursor the way I was hoping to. While the touchpad does work better here than it does in Sonic, it's still kinda finicky and is a significant downgrade from a standard D-pad in terms of accuracy. It's also worth noting that, even in a best-case scenario like Columns, the Turbo Touch 360 just doesn't feel good to use. The shape and build quality of the controller, combined with the touchpad that gives no feedback, means that you probably wouldn't want to use this thing, even in situations where it could offer an objective advantage. I also have to wonder if games like Columns wouldn't work equally well with a more conventional mouse or trackball controller. Unfortunately, I don't have either of those for the Genesis to compare against, but if they offer a similar advantage to the Turbo Touch, then I can't imagine that anyone would ever seek out this controller over a better option. As far as the results of my experiment go, I'm hesitant to draw any definitive conclusions simply due to my tiny sample size of only two games with two people over the course of four days. I've compiled all my data in a spreadsheet, and that's linked down in the description if you want to take a closer look at it. Now, if anyone watching this actually has a TurboTouch 360, I'd like to encourage you to repeat this experiment. Test more games, test on other platforms, and if you can, use more than one test subject. Then post your findings in the comment section of this video, because I'm really curious as to whether this awful touchpad can consistently offer an objective advantage in any situation. If I get enough of a response, I'll make a follow-up video compiling all the data people submit and hopefully come up with a more definitive answer. In the meantime, I'd steer clear of this controller, because unless you're playing Columns, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be setting any world records with it. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to leave it a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I've got some other videos up here on screen that you may like as well, so go give those a watch if you're interested. I think that's all I've got. Bye.